Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, welcome back to the second part of lecture 17. Uh, in the first part, we established, you know, a spatial, uh, you know, dependent specification in our regression model. And then we came to a point where we wanted to evaluate the impact of this spatial dependence as specified through the variance covariance structure of the error model uh, on the least squares estimators, right? So we figured that the least squares estimators, uh, you know, look, look like what we see on your screen here. So we were working on a model of housing prices and we are modeling those as, uh, you know, as a function of observed data on the spaciousness of a house, you know, uh, you know, at a given location SN, right, which we index by the number of rooms, right, but we really want to understand what's the, uh, you know, uh, how spacious is this uh, property about which we are trying to understand the pricing, okay? So we figured that we will get a, uh, you know, an estimate of this uh, coefficient beta two uh, on based on the least squares algorithm, which is beta hat two uh, least squares LS, which is equal to the covariance between P and R divided by the variance of R. Uh, we also figured that this beta hat two OLS is also a random variable by itself. And so, you know, what we also have to report is its precision, uh, you know, uh, uh, its precision metric, which is the variance of beta hat to LS, right? What we also know uh, from our uh, previous lecture, that is lecture 16, is that under the classical assumptions, a least squares estimator is blue. When I say it's blue, I basically want to say that it's, it's, it's the best linear unbiased estimator, okay? Now, these are the properties of this beta hat to LS under, you know, the assumptions A1 to A6. But we know that A3 is violated under spatial dependence. of model errors, correct? So now, how do we go about evaluating these properties? Well, beta 2 hat OLS, you know, or LS is going to be still an estimator. It will not be a non-estimator just because there is spatial dependence. It's still an estimator. It is also still a linear estimator. Remember, it is linear in P. So B, if the coefficient parameter is linear in P, which is it's linear in P, that means that it is still a linear estimator, right? Um, the, the question really now will arise is that, is this estimator unbiased and is it best? Is it a best estimator? So we understand what unbiased means. So basically what we are asking is, how does expectation of beta two hat LS given the data on R compare with, uh, you know, uh, 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 the true value beta two. And second best means that this estimator is the, is the one which will have the minimum variance upon all the estimators of beta two, right? Now we have to evaluate whether or not both these properties hold when A3 falls apart, okay? So let's, you know, go out and evaluate whether or not the two properties best and unbiased you know, still stay afloat when we introduce spatial dependence in the model errors, that is we relax assumption A3, okay? So let's do that, um, okay. So what we are saying is, we are asking is beta hat to LS unbiased when delta SN or let's say, I don't want to 
complicate the notation when deltas that is the model errors exhibit spatial dependence. This is the question. So, what we have basically asked is that does expectation of beta 2 had to ls given the data r on r equal to beta 2 where beta 2 is true value which is the population model right it is the truth that we are after we do not ever observe the truth but we are still able to sort of figure out whether or not these things uh, you know what we have gotten from a data driven estimate is close enough or not to the truth. Okay. So, I am going to write down work with the LHS obviously I have to right I have to work with the LHS. So, I have expectation of beta hat 2 LS given R which is to say that I am working with an expectation of uh, you know uh, uh, so just to make my notation easier I am going to just say expectation condition on R is E sub R is basically means I am working with conditional expectations. In conditional expectation R becomes the constant right. So, we are, we are going to treat R as a constant value when we apply this expectation operator onto uh, you know uh, the, the, the formulation that we are going to just write right now. N equals 1 to N P S N minus p bar times r minus r bar remember everything that is r it is r s n or r bar they are both constants with respect to this expectation operator r r bar the whole square. Now you know we know that this p s n through my regression model it is beta 1 plus beta 2 r s n plus delta s n. So, the only thing that is random inside the expectation operator is going to be indeed the delta because r is constant because we are looking at ex conditional expectation beta 0 and beta 1 they are both constants they are just true values of these parameters they are constant values right. So, the only thing to look out for is you know is delta s n. So, I am going to just say that you know you can write down you can you can do the mathematical manipulation and you can show that this uh, you know expectation the you know the stuff inside the expectation operator will reduce to the following. So, we will have expectation beta 2 had to L s is equal to beta 2 plus uh, summation n equals 1 to n expectation uh, uh, r s n times delta s n divided by n equals 1 to n r s n times minus r bar the whole squared. So, what is interesting now to us is this expectation of the product of my explanatory variable r and the error term delta right. This this term is nothing but a representation of the covariance between r s n and delta s n. And this covariance is nothing but uh, a representation of the expectation of delta given r right which is 0 by the second assumption. Right. So, the second assumption suggested the conditional expectation of errors conditional on the x which is right when I say conditional expectation it is equal to 0. So, a 2 is not relaxed a 3 is relaxed right. So, when I say a 2 I would always say refer to lecture 16 ok. So, lecture 16 as you can see is very very important it is very critical right. So, what will happen is that this second term will vanish right. So, that means this second term will vanish and I am left with beta 2. So, expectation of beta hat 2 L s given the data on R is just the true value uh, beta 2. That means very very important that the least squares estimator is of you know uh, 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 estimator is unbiased 
in the presence of spatial dependence in model errors right specifically i am only relaxing a3 okay so you know uh, you know we will see that you know it can have more complicated uh, you know implications but for now so far as spatial dependence is concerned we are only relaxing a3 so even when a3 is relaxed beta hat 2 ls is unbiased it is a good guess of uh, you know the true beta 2 value okay so uh, and 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 by extension you know by extension you know this will mean sorry i'll use a different pen here um, this will imply that beta 1 hat ls which is nothing but p bar minus beta 2 hat ls uh, times r bar is also unbiased so the regression estimators are unbiased in the presence of spatial dependence this is a form of heteroscedasticity in data so we said that a3 ensures homoscedastic errors right so we are working with a form of heteroscedastic errors again you should go back and read woolridge's book if you have not heard of this term before although i believe that you know the having a more general variance covariance matrix meaning that it's heteroscedastic and non homoscedastic non spherical uh, errors is sufficient is a sufficient explanation but if for details please refer to woolridge's uh, you know book right so we have this very important result that you know even when we have the spatial dependence going on least squares or which is seemingly simplistic is still a, does a very good job i mean i have a very good guess of the point estimate my point estimate is a very good guess of what's happening in the reality okay so you know going back and seeing saying okay you know i have figured that i am also going to have unbiasedness so far so far as the presence of uh, you know spatial dependence in, is concerned which relaxes assumption a3 so as a next step we are going to now ask whether you know uh, 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 you know we are going to ask is beta hat 2 ls the best when i say best i mean minimum variance right the best estimator of beta 2 in the presence or let's just simplify this and say when covariance delta u delta v is non zero for every or for some not every for some locations uh, location pairs u not equal to v right so some pairs of locations which are you know uh, uh, separated by a, a a distance or let's say a lag a spatial lag we have you know do we still have a best estimator so now for that we have to worry about beta hat to ols so i'm going to look at the variance of beta hat to least squares given data on r which i am now going to define as vr just for concise notation beta hat ls which is equal to the variance of r not variance of r variance conditional conditional variance operator on to i equals 1 to n uh, 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 uh. so i'm just going to write the formulation of beta hat 2 so this is going to be p s n minus p bar r s n minus r bar divided by uh, summation i equals 1 to n r s n minus r bar the whole squared right this can be then shown to be equal to summation n equals 1 to n um, r s n minus r bar times p s n divided by summation n equals 1 to n r s n minus r bar 
the squared. Okay. Now I have said that I am taking this variance conditional on R. So that means R is a constant. So a denominator will directly come out, right? It's a constant. So when a, a constant comes out of a variance operator, it comes out as a whole squared. So it's going to come out as one over summation n equals one to n r s n minus r bar whole the thing squared variance of summation uh, 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 i equals oh sorry not i just a second n equals one to capital n r s n minus r whole thing times p s n okay so it's all in the denominator now we had said like just like in case of unbiasedness when you were evaluating it we will substitute p s n with beta 1 plus beta 2 r plus the error delta okay and then you can show of course you will be able to show that v r is equal to uh, uh, so this is equal to 1 over sorry about that uh, I have 1 over summation n equals 1 to n r minus r bar the squared whole squared variance of now r is a constant so you know as we move as we multiply you know r minus r bar r minus r bar with beta 1 beta 2 r we are basically working with constants and the variance of constants is zero. So the only thing that is going to remain inside the variance operator is the random variable term delta. So I'm going to work with one to n r minus r bar times delta s n. Okay, so as case one, I'm going to work with the uh, the assumption A3 holds. That is, there is no covariance between, you know, the error term at different locations. So now if I were to focus, if you were to just, you know, bring your focus to this variance term, right? Of course, it's variance conditional on R. So R is a constant. But now evaluate it, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, closely. So I've written variance of R with a constant. So I'm going to just replace this by a constant A of course, a n, but it's a constant and this by a random variable delta n just to sort of make the notation easier. So summation uh, n equals 1 to n a n delta n. Now this variance, if capital N were just 2, you would write as the following. You would write this as a n squared variance of delta, sorry, a 1 squared Right, so I'm going to work with it for a case when n equals 2, this will be a1 squared variance of delta 1 plus a2 squared variance of delta 2 plus 2a1 a2 covariance of delta 1 and delta 2. Right, this is for the case when we had n capital N equal 2, right, we are very well aware of how the variance operator works for that simplistic case. Now, extend that understanding to the general case when we have more than two, you know, uh, 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 variables, random variables being summed inside a variance operator, okay? So my va random variables are delta S1, delta S2, delta S3, all the way through, through delta Sn. So this variance in the general form, when we have, you know, homoscedastic or spherical errors, all the covariance terms are going to vanish to zero. So all I'm going to remain with is the term with the variance and standing outside is the, uh, is the coefficient vector which is squared. So I'm going to use this to write down the variance of beta 2 hat ls given r, uh, you know, uh, 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 when a3 holds, okay? So I'm going to do that now. So when a3 holds, variance of conditional variance of beta 2 hat ls is going to be 1 over summation n equals 1 to capital N r minus r bar 
the whole squared and the whole thing squared times summation. I'm going to apply my understanding of how the variance operator works when the covariance terms are zero. So n equals one, n equals one to n r s n minus r bar squared and then apply the variance operator on each of the delta n's, okay, or the delta s n's, sorry about the s n, okay. And this variance of delta s n, this value is nothing but equal to sigma squared, it's a constant. So the constant will directly come out of the, of the, this will come out of the summation term. So I have one over summation n equals one to n r minus r bar squared whole thing squared times sigma squared times n equals one to n r minus r bar the whole thing squared. And hence I have, I can cancel one of the denominators, you know, terms uh, with what's sitting in the numerator about summation r minus r bar squared. Okay, so that's why the variance of beta 2 hat over ls will come out to be sigma squared divided by summation n equals 1 to n r minus r bar the whole squared. Okay, now where now it starts to make you know starts to appear if a3 were to be violated or if a3 does not hold or it, it, it fails, where will the difference apply? Well, the difference will apply in the case that this covariance terms will no longer be zero when if a3 is violated. So that is something we are going to look at as the next case. So let's say case two, when a3 fails, right? And we are talking about a very specific structure that we, that we have, you know, uh, that we have articulated, uh, 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 you know, in, in the covariance, variance covariance matrix. Uh, that is to say that, you know, with the given structure, you know, given the variance covariance matrix, matrix of model errors, that is to say that covariance of delta, you know, u delta v right and let's say if we were to you know evaluate it for all the locations in u being s1 till sn and v being locations s1 till sn right so these are variable we know that we can write this we can define this as a n by n matrix because you will have n factors of the row where u is varying uh, given a value of v and you know for each given value of u or location of u we can vary the v locations from s1 to sn right this omega matrix for the given structure will be written as follows when u equals v we have basically we have the covariance uh, given as let's actually write it down that we have this as sigma squared rho u minus v, okay? So when u equals v, which is a diagonal elements, I have sigma squared, sigma squared, all the way, sigma squared, okay? When I move from location one, S1, when I move from location S1 on to location S2, I have my variance changes to sigma squared rho. When I move on to S3, my, my, my covariance will make become sigma squared rho squared all the way till sigma squared rho n minus 1, okay? Similarly, when I'm looking at the second S2, location S2 in the row, uh, you know, and I move across columns, S1 will have sigma squared rho, that's u minus v is just 1. Uh, here I have an S3 also I will have sigma squared rho because 2 minus 3 is also equal to 1 and all the way till sigma squared rho n minus 2. So I can keep going. The first term here will be sigma squared rho n minus 1, which is the difference between n, capital N, so it will be capital N and location 1. 
and you will have okay i have capital n's everywhere okay so uh, okay um, okay i hope this is clear sigma square rho n minus 2 keep going sigma square rho and so on and so forth right so the so now the off diagonal elements are non zero this is a specific form of heteroscedasticity a specific form of heteroscedasticity that we have introduced through spatial dependence okay so now if the covariance terms are non zero let us specify the variance of beta 2 hat again so we are going to specify this for you know for this case right so we are going to i'm going to just write it down again so i have variance of beta 2 hat least squares is given as 1 over summation n equals 1 to n r minus r bar the whole squared the whole thing squared and then variance of r summation n equals 1 to n um, r minus r bar times delta s n okay i'm going to write this as following i'm going to generalize it we have seen this form before okay we have seen you have seen this form before in one of the earlier lectures i'm going to write down this as summation n equals 1 to n and summation m equals 1 to n right so i'm moving u's and v's one by one i'm going to write it as r s n minus r bar r s m minus r bar times the covariance of delta s n comma delta s m okay so so this is the most general form of the variance covariance the variance of beta 2 hat ols and very very clearly you will start of course these covariance these covariance terms will be directly sourced from the omega matrix which is my n by n matrix of the variance and covariance uh, factors right uh, but what happens is that this is no longer equal to the minimum variance form which is n equals 1 to n r minus r bar the whole squared so we no longer we no longer have no longer minimum variance in case of spatial dependence in model errors right so the so the final implication is that the least squares estimators are not best right so they are no longer best under spatial dependence so this is the complicate that's this is the implication that i no longer have a uh, you know a very precise estimator so least squares is still unbiased but it is not so precise right so this is the implication that we have drawn from uh, you know uh, 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 from from when we introduce spatial dependence to the regression model right so so as a next step right first we are going to just you know uh, uh, say that hence we are going to state formally that least squares estimators are not efficient not efficient in the presence of spatial dependence right uh, 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 in model errors right and now the spatial dependence in model errors as we have seen as an as we have stated earlier is a form of heteroscedasticity right so that means that ls are not blue right and remember they are still linear they are still by un unbiased they are still an estimator but the trouble is they are no longer best that is why they are not you know a blue estimator now 
what I'm going to do next is I'm going to state that the efficient estimators under uh, uh, heteroscedastic errors in general are called as the generalized least squares estimators or better known as the GLS estimators. Okay. Now given, so basically we have moved, we have moved from a specialized homoscholastic, uh, you know, uh, uh, homoscholastic variance covariance structure to a more general, you know, uh, uh, variance covariance structure where the off diagonal elements are not zero. And as a consequence, you know, the efficiency property is taken away from the least squares, the ordinary least squares estimator, but they are then restored if we work with what are called as the generalized least squares estimators, okay? So in the next part of this lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to formally, uh, you know, introduce the GLS estimators, and then I'm going to provide you a general strategy for estimating such estimators, uh, you know, so to getting to such coefficient estimators uh, when you have spatial dependence of, of a general form in the data, all right? So uh, see you in the next part of the lecture. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.